Hi, I'm here to tell you a little bit about the upcoming wonderful conference at St. Paul, Minnesota, October 15th and 16th. This is a conference run by the Columbia University Medical Center and the Lyme Disease Association. This uh, conference uh, has a tremendous group of speakers, both in the United States, as well as uh, Dr. Judith McClossey, who's come all the way from Europe. Um, you will, if you come, you will learn about, uh, you will hear a lot about clinical work with patients. Uh, you'll hear about uh, the evaluation of patients in the emergency room setting, uh, children in particular. You'll hear about the treatment of patients with chronic symptoms. You'll hear about neurologic Lyme, psychiatric Lyme disease, Lyme carditis. Um, you'll hear about new diagnostic approaches based on proteomic studies of the urine. Uh, you'll hear about other infectious illnesses uh, re uh, related uh, in some ways to tick-borne diseases such as uh, tularemia. Uh, you'll hear about, you'll learn something about Bartonella as well and the uh, methods of persistence of Bartonella. Uh, from the prevention perspective, you'll learn about these fascinating new approaches to uh, prevent the spread of, of Lyme disease by um, vaccinating the mice or by actually changing the genes of the mice using CRISPR technology and gene drives. This is outstanding, novel, and uh, fascinating work. You'll learn about a new microorganism called Borrelia maionii, a new genome species of Lyme disease here in the United States. You'll hear about um, work on the brain and uh, in vitro work that shows how the brain may actually uh, pr protect itself against microbial infections. And you'll learn about postmortem studies of brain tissue from patients with dementia uh, where uh, Lyme spirochetes were actually sought. You'll learn about the immune response to Lyme disease early on in, the, uh, in infection as well as in later stages of infection. And you learn about that in humans and you also learn about similarly what, what's going on in the uh, mouse model of uh, Lyme arthritis and the inflammatory response. From a public health perspective, you learn about Babesia and the blood supply and how that poses a risk to people in the United States, those in hospitals in particular. And you learn about the spread of, of Lyme disease uh, the unfortunate spread throughout the United States that continues uh, by uh, Dr. Ben Beard from the CDC. So there's many talks, many uh, things I could mention, but I can't go any further because I don't have time, but you should come to the conference because you will indeed learn a great deal. My name is John Othot. I'm the director of the Johns Hopkins Rheumatology Lyme Disease Research Center. At the Hopkins Lyme Research Center, we study the immunologic aspects of Lyme disease. Um, specifically, we look at how the human immune system responds to infection with Borrelia burgdorferi. We are involved mostly in the uh, adaptive immune response. That's the part of the immune system that involves T cells and their ability to uh, recognize and fight infections. Uh, in today's uh, program, I'm going to be presenting some of our work that we've done that looks at aspects of the human immune response in Lyme disease. Um, we'll be looking at areas uh, of what are called uh, cytokines and chemokine responses and looking at some of those uh, chemokine and cytokine responses that seem to be very informative about the outcomes of infection um, with Borrelia burgdorferi. Um, I look forward to my upcoming presentation and am uh, also excited about the other presenters that will be looking at other aspects of Lyme disease in the program. My background is in family medicine, but in terms of tick-borne diseases, I function more like a translator. I sift through the findings from bench work and clinical trials to develop educational content for my colleagues in primary care. At this conference, I'll use a single case as a jumping off point to give a presentation that looks at diagnostic and management considerations for patients with Lyme carditis. Hi, my name's Rob Moyer, and at the upcoming conference, I'm going to be talking about our latest findings on the A-beta peptide of Alzheimer's disease. We recently published a paper showing that contrary to all expectations, A-beta is actually an antimicrobial peptide, and that amyloid deposition, which is a hallmark of Alzheimer's disease, is in fact a protective mechanism for entrapping invading pathogens. Our work shows that spirochetes are particularly good at reducing amyloidosis in transgenic animals, 
and I'll be exploring the implications for Lyme's disease and other brain infections in my 